Hey y'all, welcome back to a vlog. It has been a minute since I vlogged. I feel like the last time I vlogged, it was around Christmas time and now it is, I think it's April 14th. It's about nine in the morning and today, Corey, myself and Elijah, we're going to go to a tulip farm for the first time. So I figured it'd be nice to vlog. I think in the last vlog I mentioned I had some postpartum hair loss. It's already growing back in. I ended up losing like two complete patches of hair. So if you see little pieces, it's growing back in. I wanted to give a quick life update prior to going out. Just to update y'all with where I've been and what I've been doing. If you follow me on Instagram, I do post a little bit more on there. Um, and when I do like short form content, I always try to come over and bring it on here to YouTube shorts. Although I can only do a minute, so sometimes the videos are too long and don't make it, so yeah. As far as the life update, everything is going really, really well. Elijah is eight and a half months. Currently, I'm still exclusively breastfeeding. Elijah is doing solids. We're doing baby led weaning, which has been um, really nice, and I really enjoy doing that method of introducing solids. I work remote still, so I work full time. Corey still works full time. I create content where I can. Um, I've just been super busy because I'm also watching Elijah as well. So technically I'm a stay at home, work from home mom. So it's a lot to manage and juggle um, day to day. But honestly, I feel like God has been giving me the strength to continue doing it. And I'm just really grateful for him for giving me just the ability, you know? So over the past several months, I've grown in my ability. I have way more work ethic. I'm more resourceful. I just get stuff done. So that's been really cool. Um, we are a no screen household for the baby. So he does not watch TV. He doesn't watch screens. So it takes a lot more creativity to keep him like entertained and stuff like that. <laughs> but y'all, it is possible. You know, through God, all things are possible. So Elijah has been doing really well, still working out. I've lost my baby weight and a little bit more. Corey and I are still working out every morning, still doing weight training, walking, just been super busy, very productive. We're out of debt. We're really focusing right now on investing, investing for retirements and just getting our finances in order after getting out of debt. It's a completely different mentality, but that's been, really exciting to learn about i listen to a lot of podcasts and listen to a lot of things about retirement it's crazy um i turned 30 march 26th so now i'm in a new decade and i'm just really grateful for where god has me right now and i wanted to give you all a little bit of an update just where i've been what i've been doing um honestly my days are so much more jam-packed with productivity intentionality like there's some things that are just important to me like having a clean house you know being able to work out taking care of my baby being able to contribute to the household so like my work ethic has just gone to another level which has been really interesting to see <laughs> like i got stuff done before but once you have a baby you gotta work in a different way so yeah it's been really cool um Corey's still very hands-on so when he comes home from work we're in this thing together we work together he's been super busy with his job just got done with conference season so you know it's a lot of travel for him he's doing really well with everything with teaching writing all the professor things so yeah god is good we are doing great. Um, you know, we still have our challenges here and there, just like everybody else, but God is good nonetheless. And I really try to put my best foot forward every single day. We do not play about our sleep. I still get a significant amount of sleep. You know, the baby wakes up maybe once in the night to feed, which is fine. And other than that, I'm sleeping. We go to bed pretty early, wake up early. I feel like as long as I'm able to get some sleep, you really can't tell me nothing. I get after it in the day, but I also find time to rest. So I'm not creating all day, every day. I don't feel the pressure to like constantly be pulling out my phone, my camera. No, I'm present. I'm in the moment. You know, my priority is being a good wife, a good. My priority is being a great wife, a great mom, present, engaged, 
emotionally available. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get to that Proverbs 31 place and she suffered nothing from laziness, okay? You wanna come say hey? We're running kind of late. <laughs> Someone just got dressed for the day. Hi. You wanna say hi? You had the hiccups? He's eight and a half months, y'all. <laughs> wow. All right, so we're on our way to the Tulip Farm. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but it's our first time going. We typically do apple picking in the fall. And if this works out well, this is something that we could do in the springtime. Um, we were going to purchase tickets online this morning, but they sold out. There were none. There were still some available yesterday. But as of this morning, they were sold out. So we're really kind of like going on a whim and hoping that we can get our ticket at the door. So we'll see. Corey, do you think we're going to be able to secure a ticket? Do you think we're going to get there? Well, I know it's no guarantee, but I do think because we're getting here right at opening and that we'll have the baby, I think uh, that will hopefully, you know, and we're a small party. It's just three of us. So hopefully I'm hoping that gets us over the edge that whoever is at this table or desk or tent or whatever it may be will just be gracious. Right. Blood is in. So they open at 10 and we'll be arriving at 10.02. Um, Corey actually found this little what do you call it a date an excursion excursion yeah Corey found this excursion so yeah i'm excited i would have never ever looked into it but i guess it makes sense because like new jersey is a garden state they have so much like produce and plants and stuff like that so yeah this is not something that i ever even heard of growing up in illinois so i'm excited to see what it looks like um and i'm sure elijah will be happy to see it as well he's taking a nap right now in the back um but yeah i'll let y'all know if we get in i guess you'll see <laughs> so like if the next clip is us <laughs> there then we got in if the next clip is me back here looking less happy then we didn't what do you think's gonna happen We ended up having a really nice time at the tulip farm. We love getting outside as a family and just being outdoors. Elijah loved looking at all the different colors of the tulips. He loves getting outside and just having the fresh air and the breeze in his hair. He just loves being outdoors. Overall, it was really nice. And out of all the colors, I decided to go with different shades of pink there were food trucks at the farm as well, so it was a nice family outing, and I definitely think we're going to make this one of our new family traditions. Okay, so we just got back. We were out there for about three hours. It was really cool. I just came back and put our um, flowers in some water. Let me show y'all really quick. Surprisingly, they all got really soft and kind of limp, but we looked up online that if you just put them in water, they can come back to life so anyways i wanted to end this video talking a little bit about contentment um i think one of the things that has been on my mind is about just about the idea of contentment i mean contentment is obviously a very biblical concept it's something that comes up regularly right whether it's what you said earlier about considering the lilies of the field or the words from jesus just saying like don't worry about material things or if it's paul learning the truth of contentment and, and for him that was um you know knowing that he can do all things in christ like he can endure any type of situation because of his relationship with the lord and so i think for us what we realize is our circumstances and situations have changed over life a lot of times right so whether that be from early in our relationship all the way till now where it's where we live where we work our relationship having a baby now and all this stuff but at the end of the day like any day is a good day to be content is what I think I'm realizing. What I would want to say is that any day is a day to be content. I think for me in particular, I can definitely oftentimes look forward to another time where the situation may be better, circumstances may be different, the scenario might be better fit for me to have the rest I want, the peace I want, the activity I want, the production that I want. But contentment is for now. Like contentment comes from God, similar to peace, enjoy those fruits of the spirit. So I think you know, my thing is like every day take an opportunity to take advantage of 
the access that we have to contentment and peace, particularly, you know, through our relationship with God. What do you think about that? The season that you are in is worthy of making the most of, you know, not having to postpone the things that you want or desire that are within God's will, you know, in reasoning, um, like reasonable things, you know what I mean? Like that you can do today, don't put them off to tomorrow because all we have is today. So for example, let's say you wanted to go to like the thing we did today with the flowers and you're like, well, that, I, I will do that one day when I have a boyfriend or I'll do that one day when I'm married and I have a kid. But it's like, if you have a desire to do that today, like you can totally do that today. Like you're worthy of showing up for yourself in the season that God has you in. Is that kind of what you're getting at? I think so. You know what I'm saying? I, I think at the end of the day, like, or in addition to the things that you were saying is that I think if you're waiting for joy, I think you'll be waiting for a long time. If you're waiting for peace, I think you'll be waiting for a long time. If you're waiting for that contentment or for the scenario to be just right for you to feel and live the way you want to live, that I think you'd be waiting for a long time. I think in Christ, we have access to so much more. And I say that, I don't say that in a way where it's like, that God just wants to give us more and God just wants to give us better of the material things we want. What I'm saying is a lot of the things that I think that we want materially, we want because we think it will bring us things that only God can bring us like joy and peace and love and patience and compassion and truly enjoying life the way God intended. And I don't yeah. think that comes at the end of having all the material things and opportunities that you want, you know what I'm saying? Or just having all of the things that you're striving for, you know? Like for us, for example, like we had to find contentment and joy during our debt-free journey. So now that we're out of debt and we're focusing on investing and, you know, setting up for our future and for future generations, we have the same contentment. Like we're, it's been interesting to see it actually because what we learned in one season still applies in the second season. And if we had not found contentment in that season, we wouldn't have it in this season. So it makes me think of the verse, let perseverance finish its work. So you will be complete lacking nothing. In what ways can we let perseverance finish its work? You know, this is where we are. This is where God has put us. We were talking about this earlier, but kind of the quote or the saying like bloom where you were planted, <laughs> like, this is where we are right now. How can we be a good steward of what God has given us? How can we be a good steward of the season that we are in, you know, while also striving, while also working and being faithful and trusting in God and his will and his sovereignty, but also embracing the path that we're currently on before we get to where we're going. So I think that's interesting because since we become parents, People say to us all the time, like, oh, just wait till this or just wait till that. You know, they're always making it seem like the worst is yet to come. But as Christians, we have been so encouraged knowing that the best is yet to come. And even if we we um, face challenging times, God is with us. So this worldly way of thinking does not apply to us. You know, as Christians, if we claim to be in the world, but not of the world, but we look for the things that we ultimately want from the world, then that makes us more worldly than we really anticipate, right? And like Leah said, the best is yet to come. And I think, again, that could sound very uh, prosperous or very much so like prosperity preaching, but the reality is the best that's yet to come is being able to spend eternity with God after this life, right? And so everything that's between then and now is small opportunities to have glimpses of what that future is to come and what that what those types of things bring is really that like we said that peace that contentment that joy that rest and that love that security because if the only time you really feel rest is when the weekend comes or when you get that break from school or when you get off work or when you get to go on vacation then that's not real heavenly godly kingdom rest right or even if you're thinking about security if you're only going to feel security once you hit that dollar amount or once you move into or out of a particular city. Once you city, get that dream job. Right, or once you get a dream job or, you know, something like, weight, for me, even like tenure, right? That's when I feel secure. If I'm waiting for security from the things of the world, then at best, I can get a worldly sense of security. And so I think what we're saying is what we're realizing in life, as our life continues to improve, we're realizing most of those improvements are coming from um, 
being able to be content and grateful for the seasons that we're in. Because yeah. if not, I can easily see a scenario where we're in the same physical and natural position in life, but having a much different experience because of our internal selves, because of our spiritual selves being very complaining or being very ungrateful, being very fearful, being very anxious, which the Bible clearly tells us not to do, which God commands us not to do. And so I do think it goes without saying, well, for me, it goes without saying that I feel like me and Leah experience a lot of um, privileges and fortune that is, you know, very, we're very grateful to have. But at the same time, I think, like Paul said, we're able to live with much and little. Um, we've been we on know, other ends of the spectrum. We've been on a lot of ends of the spectrum with a lot of things <laughs> that we've dealt with. And so I think um, in comparing, you know, saying comparison can always, again, it's not something that we're trying to do. But at the end of the day, what we're saying is where you are today, like contentment is for today. Right. Joy is for today. Peace is for today. Love is for today. Security is for today. Intentionality is for today. Working hard is for today. Fruitfulness is for today in a very spiritual sense. And so regardless of your circumstances and situations, I think you have the opportunity for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like even the, like, and I hate to try to tie in what we did today to the video, but even being out at that tulip farm, could have been a really negative experience if we took a negative perspective because there was right. a lot of uh, crowds. There was like dust kind of flying around. And maybe the flowers didn't this and that. It's easy um, to bicker and bees. transition. Yeah, there's bees and like the whole situation, right? <laughs> it, it could have been considered much different. Um, and we're just thankful to God for working out in us the contentment that he so desires. You know what I'm saying? Even doing stuff like that with... Um, the baby and doing it in a way where we can all enjoy it right. and stuff like that. And people always say such negative things about life with having kids and like we as Christians can walk with a different disposition. We walk differently than the world. So I think with what we're trying to say, like we want you to leave this video and feel encouraged to be bold, be encouraged to be, you know, faithful, be encouraged to rely on God and to really allow him to lead you and be encouraged to reach for joy and peace in the season where you are before you get to your next goal. So I wanted to just leave you guys with this little bit of encouragement to really seek contentment in your life today, in the season that you're in, and know that God is with you despite what you're facing, despite where you are on your journey, despite what goals you have or have not met. Look for ways to be present and content. So no matter what you have or what you don't have, you're able to see God in it and you're really able to enjoy it because no day is promised. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not even promised today. You know, who knows what the future holds. So really try to find a way to be content even as things are still working out, even as you are looking to get to the next place. Really thank God and honor him for where you are today because it is enough. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye.